What is going on fellow developers? My name is Tyler Potts and in today's video we're going to be going back to the basics and building our a whole landing page portfolio style page. Um, so as you can see we're creating a page called Code Boss, a lovely big hero image here with a good background here and as you can see we have some ta uh, tags up here ho or some links, home, services, project and contact us. Um, this is a one page website so everything is on the same page. As you see you've got a website, you're not afraid to share website solutions for all your needs find out more so if we scroll here you can see we get this na you can see this navigation bar at the top changes it swaps to be our home services projects and contact and if you carry on scrolling you can see we've got a services section so we've got services with a website apps games and mentoring if we scroll down a little more we've got the project section now the project section has this lovely little highlight i've used these same images for these but obviously you can change these to whichever images you need and what you want as you can see here it's just as simple as just swapping a background image out and you can also select a few more um, which doesn't do anything yet but if you did have more you could take that to a different page Finally, we have this contact section, um, which is just a simple contact, email, and message, and send message. Obviously, it doesn't work. We haven't hooked it up, but you can hook it up to a surface just by adding an action in, which takes you to some sort of surface. We're not going to go over that today, but this is what you could do if you wanted to. Um, so let's scroll back to the top, and up here, we can add, this is actually a super responsive page. So as you scroll down to mobile, you've got... Um, well, you've got the mobile version. So as you scroll, you can see we've got the website services all broken down here um, and contact form. Now, if we scroll back up slightly, you'll see it also changes when we scroll up. It changes, everything changes. We've got this dynamic little projects here. Um, these will change as well. So if we get back down to a smaller screen, you can see they go by four by four. Shrink that down and go for an iPad size. There you go. So you can see they go two column grid there, um, which is really nice. So without further ado, guys, if you're excited, don't forget to leave a thumbs up on this video. But without further ado, guys, let's get started. Okay, guys, so to get started, I've um, opened up a directory in VS Code um, and I've also added in some assets which have images inside. Um, we have the header image, the product image, and then all the surface images we're going to be using today. Um, obviously, you can use your own images and you can change this up however you like. But if you do want these images, they will be in the GitHub repo. So just check the description below. Um, but without further ado, guys, let's start this app or this website. So the first thing we're going to do is we need an index.html file. Um, and in this index of HTML file, I'm going to do an exclamation mark and I'm going to hit tab using Emmet to create our boilerplate codes. As you can see here, we've got our default stuff. We've got our head and our body. Now, inside of our head, we have these meta tags. Um, we also have the viewport tag and the title. So the title of this one is going to be code boss as named as the website is named. And then we need to link in our CSS. So to create our CSS, we're going to open up assets. We're going to create a new folder and we're going to call it SAS. So we are going to be using SAS today. And if you're not familiar with SAS, you can use CSS. Um, but obviously, I'll be nesting the tags. This is just for the speed and the ease of making a website. So inside of the SAS file, folder here, I'm going to create a new file. And I'm going to call it main.sass here. And I'm just going to add in some default boilerplate. I'm just going to say margin 0, padding 0. I'm going to do box sizing of border box and a font family of fire sans and the fallback for now will just be sans serif. We need to import this from Google though. So obviously I have this saved on my machine so it's going to work regardless but we do need to import because once you put this on the website it's not going to work for anyone who does that, doesn't have it installed on their machine. So we're going to need to link it. So let's head over to Google Chrome and we are going to search for fonts.google.com. Now this is going to bring us here and we're just going to search for the font we want. For me, it's going to be Fire Sands and then we're going to choose the styles we want. So we need regular. So let's find regular. I also need semi bold. So I'm going to get semi bold. Um, we're also going to need, I'm going to get all the italics of the ones we get. Um, I don't think I use italics, but it's just in case we do. Um, I'm going to get bold and finally I'm going to get black. I'm not going to get italic for black because we definitely don't need that. And I'm going to copy this link file right here. 
We're going to head back to our code and we're going to paste this in. As you can see, there it is. I don't like that it's breaking it down. That's not cool. So there you go. That's now got our stuff. And it's also given us the pre-connect link, which basically just uh, connects it up to um, font. So it's quicker to load. So the next thing we need to do is actually link up our CSS. So we need to compile this. Now I have this set up to just compile, but if you want, if you don't have SAS installed or you haven't before, you should go and look into installing Node SAS. That is um, using, uh, is this it? Yep. And then we go npm install global node hyphen SAS. Run that. That's going to install Node SAS for you. Mine might not work because we already got it installed. But once that is installed, we can then. Uh, well, while that's installing, we can then head over to our extensions here if you're using VS Code and search for live, oh, Kuv, live SAS compiler. As you can see, this top one by Ritwick Day. Um, if you install this, you can then run uh, live SAS. But we're also going to need a um, VS Code in. So if I just do a command and comma to open up the setting, VS Code settings. I can search for live SAS compiler. So there it is. Um, and then I'm going to edit in J or I'm actually going to edit the formats in JSON. And as you can see here inside my formats, I have it formatted to be compressed, which will compress it. The extension name will be CSS and it will save from where we currently are. So the file we're currently in. So for SAS, it'll go back one directory out of SAS and create a CSS folder. Um, and store it inside of there. So that's kind of what's happening right here. Um, and also my SAS will only compile from assets SAS. You can set this up however you want, wherever your safe path is. Uh, but for now, that is um, how you uh, get your SAS to work. So let's just close that, close that. And now I can run watch SAS. And as you can see, it will compile my SAS file into my main.css. Also to mention, once you run watch SAS, it should just be watching by default. So every single time we make a change, let's say if we just say body, uh, background color black and hit save, oh, close that. Um, it should just say success. And then if we go in here into our main, you'll see the color is black here and it's a compressed file. So there you go. So our things are being compiled down into main.css. So let me just delete that, save it, go back into index and we're gonna link this by going link CSS and in here we're just going to say dot slash assets slash CSS main CSS and there you go now we've got our CSS um, rendering onto the page okay now we've got all that set we can now just crack on with the rest of this video so inside of um, our body here we're going to create a well we're going to we're going to create a header tag and this is where we're going to have our he header and our navigation but inside of here we're going to have a container um, and then from there on, I'm just going to pass in, let's say, a H1 or a H2, which will say code in span tags. It will say code. And then afterwards, it will say boss. Now, this is just so we can style our um, code boss logo. The next bit will be a nav. Now, this is going to be where our navigation is. And we're going to have a um, dot grid in here. So, or I'm just going to call it menu grid. Um, or menu flex would probably do. Um, and then inside of here, we're going to have a few different anchor tags. I'm going to do anchor tag. We're just going to do hashtag for now. And the one's going to be home. The next one will be surfaces. After surfaces, we will have uh, projects. And finally, we will have contact. So let's save that. And now if we actually, we can now run this. Um, there's two ways you could do it. You could either go into your project folder and just double click on the HTML file to open it up like this. Or if you want to go a bit more advanced, you can actually install a uh, live uh, surfer. Again, this is also by Ritwick Day here. And that way you can go into your file directory, right click on HTML and click open with live surfer. And it will start a little development surfer on your local host um, at a port on the port 5500. And then you can actually just run it from here and select your different links and stuff and there you go so you've got your links you've got that so let's now go and style this so we've got this header let's go into our main and let's just style up our header we're going to give this a padding um top of um 32 pixels. actually you know let's do that inside of the container i think that makes more sense so let's go padding 
top of 32 pixels, uh, padding bottom of also 32 pixels. So that'll just give it a strong padding top and bottom just to move it away from the top. We're then also going to display this as flex and we're going to justify content uh, flex or justify content space between. And now this is going to split them up completely, but that doesn't look right. It's hitting the edges. We don't want it. We want a bit of spacing. So we're going to gift this. We're going to say max width of around, let's say 600 pixels, but then we want padding left to be around a hundred, I say a hundred and... 28 pixels on both sides. So we're going to say padding left and padding right by default. So there you go. And then if we just shrink the page down, you'll see even once we get past 600, it gives it spacing. Obviously, once we get a lot smaller, we will need to um, make it break down. But let's do a bit more styling before we do that. So there we go. Oh, and also, we also, because we're doing max width, that we need max, we need uh, margin zero auto to actually bring it into the center. The final thing we'll do is in header, we're going to give this a position of fixed and we'll give it the top position of zero and the left position of zero. Um, and there you go. So now if we hit save, okay, for some reason our flex has broke. Um, but this, all this does is actually um, set our um, header's position to fix. So if we give our body some height, so if we just say body height let's say 5000 pixels we save when we scroll you can see the header stays there now i'm not sure why this is uh not sent not flexing oh the container for some reason ah okay so if we went right zero there you go cool so the whip it lost its whip so there's two things we could do we could either say whip 100 percent, or we could say right zero but we're going to do whip 100 percent there you go. So now that is gone scrolling all the way across. Perfect. So we've got that. We've got our header, our nav bus there. Let's style up the actual nav now. So inside all the actual, let's do the uh, H2 first. So let's go H2. So inside our H2, we can actually say, um, we need the color to be white, but because we haven't got a background yet, I'm not gonna do that. What I'm gonna do to start with is I'm just gonna say, uh, we're gonna leave it at the color it is now but we're just going to say text transform oh that's orientation that's not transform let's say transform and we're going to say uppercase so that's going to bring it to uppercase even if it wasn't i think we actually wrote yeah we wrote it out uppercase but just in case you want to try different things um you can write this as lowercase and then it will still stay uppercase and then if you ever want to change it it's just a simple css change to do it um so text transform uppercase next we want to Go in here and just say font size and the font size for this is going to be about 32 pixels so let's say 32 pixels and there you go we're then going to say span is equal to font weight of 400 or actually i think it's 600 and then we're going to have the actual font weight of this is going to be 900 which are black there you go. So now that is looking a lot better already. So to style our nav, we're going to do nav. We're going to display this as grid. We're also removing the menu flex. I went ahead and removed this menu flex because I actually realized we don't need it. So inside of our main, we're going to display this as grid. We're then going to say grid gap. Grid gap of 16 pixels. And our grid template columns is just going to be repeat one or one fraction or four for auto no one fraction auto save go back hit save and now so i think it's four auto there you go my bad sorry four auto which is going to give us four different sized um excuse me don't open up in a new tab that was rude of you um, and there we go with a perfect gap of 16 um pixels either side and there you go that's all we need to do for that to style that up we obviously need to style the links again. Um, so we're going to go in here and go anchor tags. We're going to give a color of inherit. Um, we're then going to give it a uh, font size of 20 pixels. There you go. A text decoration of, not text or orientation, text decoration of none. Um, and that should be good for now. So we're actually going to need to make them white again. Um, we're also going to do color um, inherit here. Um, because what we can do is up here we can just say in our header we can just say color 
white and that should make everything white as you see there but for now we won't do that we'll comment that out and we'll uncomment it once we've got our uh, header image in the background so we can actually see it still so there we go we've got our nav bar now done so we've got our home services projects and contacts um so what we need to do is underneath here we need to actually i'm going to use a main tag and in this main tag i'm going to have a section which is called our um header banner project header image no what what you call it a a project let's call it the banner right it's the big banner at the top so we'll just go call it that we're then going to have another container inside of this and we're actually going to take the styling for this container and bring it out because we're going to be using the container multiple times we want to keep them consistent so inside of there we're just going to copy our um this bit here this little piece of code here and we're going to bring it into this part here now we're going to keep the container here with the separate styling because this is separate styling to do with just the header navbar but this one is to do with every single container we make. So now if we put in here, hello, and we go back, it should, as you can see, appears in line. Obviously the header is floating above it, so it's a little bit off there, but that's fine. So inside our banner, we want a H1, which is just gonna say, let's break this down. We're gonna say websites, websites, your, and then we're gonna use a break tag which we're going to give the class of hide on mobile because um, we're not going to want it to see it anywhere else. And then we're just going to say span um, and in here we'll put not afraid. Not afraid and then afterwards to share. So there you go. So we've got this. It's, it just says websites you're not afraid to share. Actually, because it's a buff there. Again, it's hidden behind the thing. Let's add a H3 in here and we're just going to say website solutions for all your needs. And afterwards, we're going to create an anchor tag hashtag with a class of button. And inside the button, we're just going to say find out more and hit save. So there we go. We've got three separate elements in here. Let's spread it down a little. Then we go back, you can see we've got those there. They're a bit hidden, a bit broken. So let's go into our main Oh, main sass here and let's scroll down here let's go into main and inside our main we're going to have our section which is equal to a uh, banner and then i think it's called section banner it is and then in there we're going to set up well we're going to set up a min height of 100 feet h that's going to bring it to the exact height of the whole page you won't be able to see that but it is we're then going to display this as flex and we're going to align item center so there you go, it's now all centered, although it's centered in the wrong way. Why are you centered to the center center, if that makes sense? Oh, <laughs> so we've got our flex and it's now, for some reason, squishing our container. So let's just go in and just say container width 100%. There you go, that's now fixed it. You know what, let's put that actually on our width up here as well. So it actually keeps 100% width unless it hits its max width. So that means we won't need to use that. There you go. And then here we can just say background and we're going to say background image is going to be equal to a URL. And we're going to do dot dot. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, dot dot slash images slash header dot JPEG. Now, if we go back, you can see we get that big image, which is nice. Uh, but let's just say let's just make sure it's always in a good position. So we're going to say position center or center left because we kind of want this, the, the actual face to be in it. So if we center right. And then we just want to say background size is going to be equal to cover because we never want it not to cover the whole size. Now, if we save and we shrink this down, you'll see the lady always stays on the right side as we shrink it down. So there you go. That now works. So let's um, close this and there we go. So we've got that. We could, you know, we could probably say top right because we actually want the head and that to be in there mainly. I think that's right. Yeah, there you go. That looks a lot better. Cool. Okay, sorry. Let's stop messing around with that. So that's good, but we need an overlay on this. So we need to give this a position of re relative. So I'm just going to say position relative. And then after this, I'm going to do an and after. Now, there's a pseudo element that basically says after the um, opening tag or before the, uh, after all the content inside of it, we're going to have a 
we're actually going to have a uh, box in here. We need to do content nothing because this require after pseudo elements to actually display requires a content attribute or content um, property, and then we're going to display this as uh, a block. We're also going to give this a position of absolute, and we're going to set it to top zero, left zero, right zero and bottom zero we're then going to give it a c index of zero and we're going to give it a background color and let me just get the hex code for that it's going to be this hex code here um so one two zero zero two f but then we're going to give it an opacity of about 0 0.8 now if we go back you can see we have this nice little color behind us but our content is behind it so we can't actually click our content which is very frustrating so if we go back here, we can now go into our container and give this a position of relative and give it a C index of one. And that has now brought our content to the top, as you see there. Also, you might notice that our, our code boss header is now behind um, the actual page. To fix that, we can go up here to header and we need to give this a set index of let's say 99. So it's on top. So there you go. It's now on top. We can also uncomment our color here to make it white. And as you can see, we now have the white code boss header too. We've also got that text in the center. So we've got our container. Let's now get our H1. Um, and in our H1, we're just going to give it, I think a font size of 72 should be fine. So let's say font size 72 pixels to start with. There you go. That's big and lovely. Um, again, color white. So we can actually, again, color inherit here. Uh, it might actually work. We don't actually need color in here. Up here, we'll just say, in our section, we'll say color white. We know every single piece of text needs to at least be white in here, only because we have a dark background. So we don't need to necessarily call color white on every single element. So we'll just go do that. So font size there. But we then need to go to our span and give this a color of the pink hex code. So let me grab the pink hex code. Um, and this pink hex code is this one here. So FF9FDB. Hit save. And there you go, websites you're not afraid to share. Now let's style the H3 below this. So let's go to H3. And before we do that, we need to give this a margin bottom of 32 pixels, just to move that away. We're also going to copy these two elements here and paste them in here. Um, but instead of font size 72, which is quite large, I think we're going to go for a uh, font size of 36 pixels. And there you go, that's looking a lot better. But we also want this font weight to be a uh, regular so we're gonna do 400 there you go so that's looking a lot nicer now now the button we're not going to style inside of our container what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the top again and we're going to create a class up here calling it button and we're going to style this up here so we're going to give this a display of block and a mac or no a display of inline block inline block we're then going to give it um a color of white and a background color of this pink here. So the FF9FDB color we have. So let's go back. That's looking a bit better. Um, we're then going to give it a um, padding. And the padding is going to be roughly 16 pixels all around. It, yeah, let's go 12 pixels, uh, 16 pixels. We're then going to give it a border radius of 8 pixels to round out those edges a little. Uh, we'll give it a text decoration of none to avoid the actual um, text decoration. Um, and then we'll give it a text transform of uppercase. And there you go, that's uppercase. But we also want to give it a font weight of bold. So we're going to do 700. And there you go, that's our button now styled as well. So we've now got every single component. So we can reuse this button class to give our uh, all our buttons in the page as many colors as you want. So now if you scroll here, you can see... Code boss will continue scrolling, but once we get to this part, because it's white, you can't actually see it anymore. So we kind of need to come up with a solution for that. Now, the solution I have is we could just add a background color to the header background here. So we could just say background color, and we could just say, let's say this, for example. So that's all right, but it doesn't look that great. So what we're going to do is we're going to ignore this for now. But later on, at the end of the video, or in another video, actually at the end of the video, we're going to give it some JavaScript that's going to say once it scrolls um, to a certain point, so let's say once we scroll to, let's say, about here, 
We're then going to add the background color and shrink the header slightly so it's not so thick um, to then make it look a lot better so when we scroll we can actually see it. But for now, we're not going to worry about that. So let's head back over here. Let's go down towards um, our section here. And actually, we need to go to HTML. And then under this section, we're then going to create a new one. We're going to call it section dot. Well, we're going to do hashtag surfaces. And I actually, I am going to give it a class as well of surfaces. Now, the reason we're doing an ID is so we can actually use an anchor link later on to scroll to it. So let's now in here, just give it another container. And inside that container, we're going to have a H2. And this H2 is going to say surfaces. Now we're going to have a surfaces grid. So I'm just going to say surfaces grid. And now inside of here, we're going to have four different surfaces. So I'm going to do, I'm going to just do dot surfaces times four or surface times four. And now we can break that down and we can have an image or we're going to do a, we're actually going to do a diff, which has an image. You know, what? we'll do an image tag. So we're going to create a figure with an image tag inside of it. Oh, because it's highlighting automatically. There you go. It won't do that. There we go. And inside of there, we'll give this a class of image box and this a class of image. Um, let's remove all these surfaces. And there you go. So we've got the image in here. Now we can repeat this over, but first underneath the figure, we're going to have a website or a H3 that says websites. We're then going to have a paragraph that is just a bit of Lauren Mip, some text. We'll do that there. There you go. Let's break that down just so it's a bit easier to read. And there you go. That's all we're going to be doing for the markup for this. So let's copy this part and we'll duplicate this one, two, three times. Now, inside of websites the second one we're going to do apps the third one we're going to do games and the fourth one we're going to set as mentoring now we just need to actually get these source images so we'll just go dot slash oh, dot slash assets images and we're going to get the surface image one and we're going to copy this and i'm going to just paste this here and this one's going to be surface image two and we're going to copy and paste that there. And I'm just going to say surface image free. And finally, if you haven't guessed it already, this is going to be surface image zero. No, I'm joking. It's four. <laughs> um, so we've got that. I'm I, I am normally you should add an alt tag for this tutorial. I'm not going to do it because well, we could we could just say website surface. Um, and we could just paste that in there, paste that in there, paste that in there. We could say app surface, um, game surface. And the final one is a mentoring surface. There you go. So now we've got all of those in there. We've got the images, the text, and everything. So this is all the markup we need. I'm just going to break this down a little bit so it's easier to read. Um, break that down and break that down. There you go. So now this is our surfaces markup. So we've got a surfaces grid. Uh, we've got a title for it. And we've got everything else we need. So let's head into the styling and let's style it up. Okay. So let's scroll down here and below the banner we're going to have the surfaces um which is this in here we're going to give it a padding top of well we'll do that in the container actually let's go into the container and we're just going to say padding top of 64 pixels we're going to have a padding bottom of the same we're then going to give it a we're going to give the actual surface a background color of EEE because I want it to be slightly gray. So now if we scroll down here, you can see we have this slightly gray background. Oh, also, <laughs> if we scroll back on top, we still have this body height of 5,000 pixels. We can turn that off for now. <laughs> and there you go. Now you've got this nice gray background, but obviously this does not look nice at all. This does not look like anything we've designed. So let's head over in here and style this up. So Let's go down here inside container. Let's go H2. Now this is going to be text align, oh, text align center to bring it to the middle. It's going to have a margin bottom of around 32 pixels. There you go. So let's push that down. Um, we're then going to give it a text transform of uppercase. There you go. And a font size. The font size is going to be about 36 pixels. 
There you go. So that's 36 pixels. And we're going to give it a color of a 313131 just because we don't want it to be a perfect gray because that won't look that nice. So there you go, or perfect black because that, that doesn't look that great. So there you go. You've got a subtle uh, dark gray there, which you can't really notice, but it definitely makes an impact. And there we go. So let's now style up our card here. So we've got all of this here to style up. Let's move back. Let's go in here and let's say surfaces grid. Now we're going to use display grid for this. We're also going to use um, grid, oh, grid template columns. And this is going to be a repeated grid of um, four one FRs. We're going to have a grid gap of around 16 pixels. So let's go back. And there you go. They're, they're a bit broken, but that's because the images are breaking them out. So one thing we need to do is actually a good thing to do. It's at the top here. We could say image max widths are 100%. There you go. So that's all. That's one thing you should always do. I always add it in because it always makes sure they never go out of their containers. Unless you want them to go out of their containers. But otherwise, I always add that in. So there you go. So let's scroll back down in surface grid. And let's go to the surface. Um, so in each surface, we have a image box. So we're also going to say image box. We also, I've just realized, we will need to wrap this website inside of a dot content block so i'm just gonna quickly do that and i'll see you once that's done okay guys so all of those now have a content wrapped around them the reason we needed that is because we're going to need padding on that content box to move it away from the edges but in the image box we're just going to display this as block we're just going to give it a width of 100 percent and then we're going to get our dot image and our actual image is going to be display block again so we're going to display block, we'll give it a width 100%, but we're going to give it a height, and the height is going to be equal to about 130 pixels. So we'll say, actually we'll say 128 pixels, and we're going to use object fit. Now what object fit is it makes the image act like a diff with a background image instead of an actual image trying to fill everything out. So in here we're going to do um, object fit cover. So if we now go back, you'll see they no longer stretch as high as they can. They all sit at the exact same height, but the actual elements on the page. But we've used object fit to make sure they don't overflow. So let's using that. That's great. Now on the image box, we're going to have a border bottom. We're going to use about five pixels. Um, the color of it's going to be the pink. Uh, oh, and also it's going to be solid. Let's go back and there you go. We've got these this nice little box down there. Now, after this, we're going to have that content box we created and we're just going to give it a padding, or not padding top, a padding of 16 pixels. And that's moved it in. We're also going to go to the surface and we'll give it a background color of white. And there you go. We're also going to give it a border radius. Oh, that's border bottom, not a radius. Thank you very much. Border radius of 16 pixels. We're just going to round out the bottom. We're always going to do overflow um, hidden just because it then overflows the edges of the images that stick out. So there you go. Now we've got these nice looking cards. But we also need some sort of box shadow. Um, we need a good box shadow. So let's say 0 pixels, 6 pixels, 12 pixels, RGBA, 0, 0, 0, 0 0.2. There's my go-to sort of box shadow. That's a bit too thick. Let's give it 0 0.1. There you go. So it's a subtle box shadow, but it is there. Um, and there you go. So that is the surfaces section all done. So you go down here and you've got your surfaces. Obviously, none of this is responsive yet. This whole website isn't responsive. And we are going to be adding in the responsive section later on in this video. But for now, we're going to keep it simple and keep it to a desktop screen. And then we'll just make it responsive as we go. So underneath our surfaces, we're going to need a new area. Um, and that is going to be our work or our project. So we're going to say dot projects or section dot projects, hashtag projects. There we go. And then in there, we're going to do container and we're going to have an H2 again, which is just going to say projects. And then below that, we're going to have a projects grid. Um, so we're going to say projects grid. And then we're going to have a singular dot project in each one of these now these projects are going to have a few different elements so we're going to have another element inside of here 
which is going to be called the content. And we're going to have a H3 again, and we're just going to say project one, for example, for this first one. We're going to have a paragraph which has about uh, 20, 20 pieces of lorem ipsum, maybe a bit more. Um, and under there, we're also going to have an anchor tag that has the class of button to actually, which will say learn more. So this whole section here is basically going to have, each of our projects is going to have a content area. Um, which isn't going to be visible by default. So this content is going to be hidden until you hover over the actual projects. We're then going to have a H1 or a sorry a H3 um, with the title of the project and then a paragraph just with a little bit of a description along with a button. So inside of here, we're going to take this. So we're going to copy this three, f three times. We're going to copy it six times overall, but we're going to do a three column grid. So we're going to start with three. Now let's head over into our main. Underneath this, we're going to say dot projects. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just say projects H2. And you might notice that we've, we're going to be repeating this H2 class. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut this. We're going to delete this H2 from in here. We're going to scroll up. And over here, inside of our uh, where we've got our container here, we're going to just put a section which has a H2 inside of it. So in every section, we're gonna have a H2 that centers itself and looks like this. And that way, if we refresh, you can see it now has default styling, which is great. Um, and now let's go back down to our projects here. And we're just gonna say padding top 64 pixels, padding bottom 64 pixels. There we go. Also, we can go up here and delete the H2, oh, we did remove it. I didn't, I thought we didn't remove it from the uh, grids. Cool, so we've got that. Let's go down, there you go. So we've got our project starting to look a bit better. Um, now below this, we're gonna obviously have our project grid. So we're gonna say project grid, projects grid, and we'll display this as grid. Now we're displaying this grid. We're then gonna say um, grid, Template columns is going to be repeat three one fractions with a grid gap of 16 pixels. There you go. So if we go back, we should see three equally uh, wide uh, boxes here. And there you go. So that's those three. Let's also add, if we go into our index, let's copy these projects and duplicate them one more time. So we have two rows. So let's set this to four, five, and six so we have two rows of content as you can see we already have two rows of content it's already aligned right so let's go back into our main now we're going to create a dot project and each project is going to be around well it's going to have a um all the content in it and we're just going to say padding 16 pixels we're then going to have a background image which is a url and we're going to be using the same project image for each one of these but you can use a different one it's just for this tutorial i'm just going to use the same one so you can split these out and you can actually say project and we can use the we could say and nth child and for example uh, nth child let's say two and i'm just gonna say background image um it's going to be equal to url dot dot slash images and we could say surface one for example um, and that you that way you'll see you've got one and your project two is that and you could do that all the way up So you could do project two three four five six um, and just change that image But for now, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna stick to one for just this tutorial So there you go. We've got these here, but you can see once again, we need to we need to hide our content so actually Inside project we're actually gonna remove that padding and we're gonna go dot content padding 16 now, background color is going to be equal to an RGBA value. Now, this RGBA value is going to be uh, 64, 64, 39, 68, and 80, or 0 0.8. Now, if we save that and go back, you can see we have this nice dark purple, um, which is good. Also, on here, we're going to say uh, border radius, border radius, of 16 pixels again and also we need to uh, overflow hidden 
There you go. So now we've got these rounded edges. So we've got the content. We're also going to set the color for everything inside of here to be white because we need it to be white. And now let's style the H3. So the H3 is going to be about, uh, we're going to give it a font size. And we're going to say 32 pixels. So it's going to be quite big. We're then going to have the paragraph tag, which is going to be a font size of 18 pixels. Which is also going to be quite big. But also under this, we're going to say margin bottom 16 pixels to bring it down. And we're going to copy that and do the exact same thing inside the paragraph tag to bring that down. So there you go. You can see we've got these projects, but we don't want this to display by default. So what we're going to do is say um, opacity zero. And there you go. You can't actually see them. But what we're going to do is say on project hover. So I'm going to get this. And underneath we're going to say and hover. And we're just going to say dot content opacity one. But we're going to set a transition. So we're going to say transition 0 0.4 or four uh seconds so now if we scroll down you can see when you hover over them you get this uh, nice little hover effect um, to display what project is it gives you a description about the project and you can change these up however you want so there you go it's a simple little project fade in um, well little fading um, project so we've got that we've got all of this now the last thing we need is a button underneath our projects here so because this isn't going to be all our projects it's just the main ones let's drop this down just so we can see this a bit better we're gonna have anchor tag with dot button but we're actually gonna pull it in a diff called um centering or something we're just gonna say center um and then in that diff oh, we're gonna have a anchor tag with the class of button href and in here we're just gonna say few more save and there you go we've got a few more button but we need to go into our center so in project grid we're going to say margin bottom 32 pixels we're then going to go under project grid and we're going to say dot center it's just going to be text align center hit save and there you go we've now centered this button and it's looking nice so we've got this the final bit to our project is the contact form so let's head back Let's go into our index and underneath this section, we're going to have sanction.contact, hashtag contact. Oh, I put content instead of contact there. Let's swap that up. And then in here, obviously, we're going to have a container, but then we're going to have a form. And in, we're not going to have an action because the form's not actually going to submit anything for this tutorial. Um, we're also going to have a H2 above this form. So we're just going to say H2 and we're just going to say contact. And in this form, we're going to have a few input fields. So we're going to have a dot grid or uh, let's say form grid. And in here, we're going to have a name. So we'll say dot name uh, dot. What should we call this one? Well, we'll have a dot group element groups. Uh, we'll say form dot grid and then we'll say form group form group. That makes sense. There we go. And then in here, we'll have a label which says four, and we're just gonna say name, and we're just gonna say name in here. Well, actually, we're not gonna do a label. We're just gonna do an input. And this is gonna be type text. And inside of our name, we're just gonna have these, uh, we're just gonna say name, name for the ID. And we'll give this a class of um, form element. And we can copy this. We can also remove the form group because it's not necessary. I, I was thinking of something we could do, but I feel that it's better not to. So we've got that. The second one will be our email. So from here, we'll just say email, email. We also need to do a placeholder for both of these. I'm just going to say placeholder is equal to, and I'm just going to say name. Obviously, the second one will be email, and I know I put a double space there. Um, so there we go we've got our types our names our ids our placeholders and our classes and the final one is going to be an input or a text area um, with a name of message an id of message we're not going to have any coals or rows we're going to use uh, css to define the size um, but we are going to have a placeholder equal to message um I can't remember. Yeah, that I think that's right. 
And then we'll also have a class on here to form area. There we go. So we've got that. Let's go back to our website, see what that looks like. There you go. This looks great already. We've got our contact here. Um, we've got, go away. We've got name, email, and message. So let's go back and let's style this up. So let's go into our main. At the bottom, underneath the this one, we're going to say contact. And inside of our contact, we're going to give it a background color. And we're not going to use the pink. We're actually going to use a purple. So... The purple hex code we'll be using is 9B75D7. We're then going to give the H2 we have in here, or we're going to do a container.h2, dot container, H2, um, and that's going to be a color of white. We're then going to go into container, we're going to give it a padding top of 64 pixels and a padding bottom of 64 pixels. Go back, scroll down, and there we go. That's looking a little bare. It's looking a little bare. But in our H2, um, underneath our H2, we're going to have our form. Now, our form is actually going to have a different max width. It's actually going to have a max width of around 600 and something pixels. So we're going to say max width of, let's say, 680 pixels. Um, we're also going to do display block. And margin zero auto to center it. There you go. But it's now centered. Now underneath the form, we're gonna have a um, form grid. So we're gonna say dot form grid, which is gonna be display grid. Um, we're then gonna give it the uh, gri grid <laughs> gap of 16 pixels and a grid template columns. And this is gonna be a repeat one fraction or no two so we're gonna have that a grid template columns of repeat two one fraction which is going to bring it here now obviously the message box doesn't span all the way across like we want to so to do that we're actually going to grab the class name which is form area so we're going to say dot form area and we're going to give this a grid column of span two i think that's yeah that's the correct term so spanning two means it's going to span two of our column gra gaps which is obviously the figure we could also do span i believe minus one or is it just minus one is it zero minus one is it one minus one there it is <laughs> and this way it will always span the whole column grid um and that way, so even if we made this, let's say we made this five repeat, you can see this one will always be full width. Um, so let's go back to two. And there you go. That's now a lot better. Um, so we've got the grid area, but let's also, now let's style the actual um, inputs, which are called form elements. Is it form element? or It's form elements, not elements. Um, we're going to display these as block. We're going to give them a width of 100%. Um, we're going to give them a background color of white. Um, we actually want to do appearance none, um, just so iOS and stuff doesn't style it themselves. Appearance none, uh, we'll say border none, outline none, background, normal background none. Now we're going to use background color to overwrite this, but just because some browsers will, or some devices will, uh, change the background and the background color will not affect it for some reason which is weird i don't know it's a weird thing um there we go what's gonna do the it's pretty much the same thing for the text area so we're also gonna say form area here uh, to give it the same sort of styling we're gonna give it a, a border radius of about eight pixels well that's a border definitely don't do just a border that would be insane um and yeah it looks a bit weird but let's say padding of 16 pixels all the way around and there you go that's looking a bit better also i've noticed our placeholder is a lowercase and it's really bothering me so let's make that an uppercase for those two that's looking better um, and also let's give this a font size of around 20 pixels i like to make my text a little larger especially for forms it makes it easier more legible a bit better um, we're then going to give it a placeholder color so we're going to say placeholder like this and we're going to say it's color i want it to be 888 
I don't know if that's dark enough. It might, might need to be a little bit darker. Yeah, let's make that like AAA. And there you go, that's a lot lighter. And then the actual color for this one will be a 313131. So when we actually type in here, you can see it's a lot darker text. So you know when there's actual text in it and it's not. So that's just a placeholder and that's the actual name. There you go. So let's move back and underneath our text here, we need an input. The input needs to be a type of submit with a class of button. And the value will be send or send message hit save go back and there you go you can see the button's kind of stalled but you can also see it's got this extra default stuff on it so one thing we're going to do is in our sas we're going to go up to our dot button class and we're going to say um, we're going to do some reset so we're going to do appearance none uh border none outline none and background none but because this is uh cascading style sheets we're going to move these to the top of the button class. So the rest of our styles will overwrite them. And there you go. Now we've done our resets and that, but also the button is actually spanning the whole width. Um, so what we're gonna do just to fix that, oh, cause it's inside the container grid. That's my bad. We at, where is, oh, it's at the bottom, missing it? Sorry, my bad. Uh, we need to actually move this out of the actual grid cause this isn't gonna sit on the grid. This is just gonna be there. So we scroll down, you can see it's now sitting at one spot. Uh, for the form grid, we'll add a margin bottom here. We'll say margin bottom 16 pixels, just to move it down and keep it even spacing. And the actual button here, we're gonna add inside of a right align. And in the right align, so underneath form area, we'll say right, oh sorry, underneath, not underneath the form area, underneath the form grid, We'll say right align, text align right. So that should hopefully have moved it over to the right side, as you can see there. And that's looking a lot better. But we also need to give that um, input a cursor. So actually, on button, another default thing to add would be a cursor pointer. So we're going to say cursor off pointer. Let's scroll down. And there you go. Now, all our buttons will definitely have the cursor to show. Also, I did do font size in here, didn't I? No, I did not. We're gonna give these a default font size of uh, 20 pixels. So it might make them all a little bigger. As you can see there, everything is now a little bigger. The buttons on every single one are a lot bigger, which looks a lot nicer. Um, and there you go. So that is actually the bulk of our website. But now we need to fix our mobile. So if we go here and let's shrink this down to mobile, you'll see it looks beautiful. Like there's nothing wrong with it. Um, I don't know what you guys are on about, but we're going to need to fix that. Let's be real. It is completely broken. Let's start off on iPad. iPad's a little bit more manageable. Let's do an iPad on the side screen here. So it's, it looks all right, but it's not great. It's not great. It needs fixing. So let's start off from the top. So let's go back right up to the top in the container. We're going to say at media and max width off. Now, I normally use min width, but for this tour, I'm going to use max width. And we're going to do 1023 pixels or 1025 pixels, uh, I believe, which should be right. Uh, and then we're going to do padding left of about half the size. We're going to say 64 and then padding right of half the size. Hit save. And if we go back, you'll see it's now slightly bigger, which is nice. You know, what? I think that actually can be 24 pixels. Yeah, it can be 24 pixels. I don't know why I went for 23. I don't know what went through mine. So that actually fixes some of our issues. Like I actually think needs now project cards are actually all right as well. Um, but let's actually go back. Um, so that's just one bit. That's not, it's not great. It still doesn't look the best, but this one, this part here, the header now looks good. Let's go to surfaces. Now these are too squished. They're way too squished for what they are. So inside of our surfaces, that's not our surfaces, inside of our surfaces section, so we've got our surfaces grid here. We're actually going to add a media max width of 1024 pixels again. And we're going to give it the grid template columns. And we're going to set repeat is this time to two one fractions. So now you can see they're now split. They're a bit wider, but they do look a lot better. So now there's only two surfaces per row. Uh, yeah, two surfaces per row. Um, and there you go. So that's looking a lot better already. Again, let's go to our projects now. I actually like this. So I think I'm going to keep these as they are, but I might shrink the text down a little bit just to make it a bit more legible. So let's copy this, 
go down here into our paragraph and let's just say um, font size, oh, not font size adjust, um, of 16 pixels. We're just going to copy this and in here we'll just do a similar thing, but we'll go down to 28. Scroll back and now if you hover one of these, you can see it's a bit more legible, it's a bit, this text is a bit smaller and it looks a lot better. So that is just enough a bit to do. Let's go down to our contact and the contact form looks fine. So that's good. But now what about this screen size? <laughs> Oddly, I like this screen size. I think it looks good, um, but it doesn't look good. So we need to sort that. So websites you're not afraid to share, website solutions for all your needs. That's fine. This text, this header is fine. If we scroll down, this also is fine. Again, we don't do it, but the projects now are definitely broken. You can definitely see that the projects are broken. So let's go to our projects. Let's copy this, go to our grid, our projects grid. And what we're going to do is we're going to say grid template columns is equal to repeat two one fractions. And there you go. Now they're on two lines and I think that looks a lot better. Um, that gives us six projects just to show going down to so two per row. And there we go. And again, the contact form looks fine. Now, the biggest one which is going to have some major changes is the iPhone smaller screen. How, or oh, actually, if we go back to iPad, how does up here, yeah, up there looks fine. So it's just iPhone now. So if we go to, let's say, iPhone plus, also, did I say 1024? Sorry, this is completely wrong. That needs to be 768 pixels. Let me go back to um, iPad quickly, scroll down. And there you go. So now on the larger side, it's still going to be free. Else that would have broke that as well. There you go. So now that's two per row on just the iPad this size. Let's go to not iPhone X. Let's try an iPhone Plus size. Um, and it looks terrible. Let's scroll up to our um, navigation first. And we need to hide the navigation. We would need to show a hamburger menu here. Um, so I'm just going to say at media screen or not a media max width. At seven, six, seven pixels. So straight after we've done our thing, we're going to display as none. And there you go. That's gone. We then need to get our... We need to copy this. We need to go to our main here inside of our banner. And down at our H1, we've got to change that font size. It's way too big. We're going to say font size. We're going to like half it. We're going to say like 42 pixels. Hit save. It's looking all right, but maybe a bit smaller. Let's say 36 pixels. Okay, okay, okay. That's fine. Now, let's go back to 42 quickly. And I know why that's not sitting up there correctly. And that is because we added a break. And the break says on mobile. Um, uh, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Banner. We've got hide mob here. So let's copy this class. Um, and we could add this to the top here. We could just say, or we get to the bottom and say, at media max width 767 pixels dot hide mob display none. Go back and there you go. That's now moved it up onto that line. But again, I'm not happy with that. Let's scroll back up to our banner. And what we're going to do is in here, we're going to say 38 pixels. Save. Again, I think 36 might even still not be great. Oh god, 32 pixels. Save. There you go. So it's, I wanted it to be on two lines. I think it looks better on two lines and that will do for now. Let's copy this. Let's pull it inside H3 and we're going to put this down to about 24 pixels. Uh, Actually, maybe even 20 pixels. Oh, I don't like one it being on one line. 18 pixels? No. Oh, saying that, no. Let's put this at 20 pixels. What we need to do is go to our container again, our main container top and say at a smaller screen, we'll say padding left 32 pixels, padding right 32 pixels, because we don't need it to be that big. And there you go, that already looks a lot better. Um, so there you go, it says websites you're not afraid to share still, website solution for your needs and then find more button. Now on a smaller screen, I am gonna shrink the button size down we're going to have the font size for this of about 18 pixels as well. Just so it's not so big compared to the rest of the text. There you go. That's already looking better. Let's scroll down. And now surfaces, this needs to be a solid one column grid. 
So let's scroll down to our surfaces banner and inside of our grid, underneath the 1024, we'll just say grid, template columns, repeat one, one fraction. Now we can make this easier and we could just say one fraction like that. And there you go. Now we have this solid one fraction grid. So it's just a one column grid all the way down. Now we could just display this block or whatever, but this works fine too. It keeps our grid gap this way. Um, so that's that part. Let's do our projects. It needs to be the same. It needs to literally copy this, go down to our projects, and underneath this, we can just paste that in. Go back, and now it's a one column grid again. And there you go. So that's already looking a lot better. You can see everything's now solid on one column grid, which is great news. Now it's our contact form. Now this is not the worst, but these need to go on one column. It can't stay like this. So again, grid column grab. Let's cop copy this, go all the way down to our form and our form grid and just say on a smaller screen, we just want one fraction. Go back and there you go. We get it all on one line. So that is how we make this responsive. So now let's make this like this and let's just scroll down as we need. You see, as it gets a bit smaller, it then starts breaking down and it goes this. There you go. So same with the header, when you shrink it down, all this starts changing as you get to each section. This is mobile, there you go. Let's go back up, let's scroll down to these ones. Again, same deal here, as we scroll down, they just break down into their own grids here. Um, and start looking a lot better, especially at the actual mobile sizes. And same with the contact form, so there you go, all the way out. So there you go, that's the responsiveness of this whole website done, but there's one last thing we need to do, and that is our actual title at the top here. As you can see, when we scroll down, you don't really get much fun out of that, do you? You, you know, it, it looks bad, it doesn't look great, so let's add a class when we scroll. So we're actually going to create that class before we um, add the scroll. So in our header, we're going to, underneath the header, down here, we're going to say and.is scrolling uh, and this one, I'm gonna have a background color um, and we'll probably what colors we got here I think it's gonna be the darkest color we're then gonna say um, a dot container and we'll get the padding top to be 16 pixels and the padding bottom to be 16 pixels so let's actually add this class to it for now just for a test so inside of our header was a class is scrolling and there you go so that's what it's going to look like there i've also noticed these are not in line with the code boss now to fix that let's scroll back where is it inside of our this we need to say a line item center and there you go now they're in line so that was off the whole time i'm sorry if anyone noticed that but there you go so now we have this nice bar but we don't want it on all the time so let's take that class away we don't want it on all the time so we're going to need some JavaScript. Now, a lot of people hate JavaScript, but it's not that scary. So inside of our assets, we're going to create, I don't know why there's a CSS folder there. That's a random CSS folder. Uh, let's create a new folder and we're going to call this JavaScript. And inside there, we're going to have a class called main.js. Now in here, I'm just going to say window.onload. I'm just going to do a simple window.onload. We're going to call a function. And this is where we're going to, let's just alert loaded. So if we go back and we refresh, Hello? Oh, wait a second. I'm an idiot. Inside of our index, at the bottom of our tag, we need to call script source. And we just need to say dot slash asset. Oh, that's not right. Dot slash assets slash JavaScript main JS. And I've actually double slash there. There you go. Loaded. So that tells us the, pay, the JavaScript is now working. This is why we run alerts, just so we know it's working. We're then going to say window dot add event listener scroll and we're going to call a function which is going to take the event and let's just log the event so we're going to log the event here now as you scroll you can see we get this event here and it's going to give us some different elements it's going to say uh, the target it's going to say all of these different things here which is fine so what we need to do now is go back to our code and we actually need to get the windows position so we need to say window um, well, window.pageYoffset. 
Now, if we go back and we refresh and we scroll, you can see it starts console logging the position of our scroll. Now, we want our our bar to appear probably quite far in. So when we start scrolling to about halfway down here, let's say, because we need to cater for mobile too. So let's just say around 100 pixels. So we're going to say here, copy this. We'll say if window.offy is greater than 100 pixels, we're going to say document dot query selector we're going to get our header oh sorry um dot class list dot add and we're just going to say is hyphen scrolling save refresh and now as we scroll once we get to a header you can see that class is now applied but it never goes off so when we get back to the top it never comes off what we need to do is say else Grab the exact same thing and just say remove. There you go. So let's refresh. Let's scroll down. We get the header. And once we get back up, it disappears. So there you go. It's now like we've got this lovely little floating header that follows us. And it's that simple. What? It's probably, it's well, it is less than nine lines. It's less than 10 lines of code, sorry. Um, which is so simple. It's something so subtle and so simple um, to actually implement. And there you go. So that is how you create a simple landing page, portfolio page. Um, it's it's pretty, pretty fun. I mean, we've created the uh, websites, apps, game services. We've created a project section with actual projects. Now, these can link off to your projects. So let's say this is, uh, this is going to be your website. This links off to um, a website you built, um, for example, mcdonalds.com. Imagine if you built that. Um, that'll be here. You click learn more. It takes you to mcdonalds.com and it shows you the website they built. Or it could take you off to another page that shows an, a case study of what you've made. Um, same with any of these. You've then got these services that tell people what you do and you've given people a way to contact you. Um, and then you've got this nice, lovely landing page. So when you first land on the page, this is what you see. Um, so without further ado, guys, this is the end of the video. I hope you have liked um, watching this. I hope you've um, learned a lot. I hope you've got a lot done and you're progressing in your career. But for now, guys, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. If you want to see more, don't forget to smash that subscribe button. If you have any questions or queries, don't forget to leave a comment, share with your friends, and also don't forget to stay awesome. Thank you, guys, and peace out.